Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Square root function. Anytime a function has an endpoint, you always want to label that on your graph. So you definitely want to label 0, 0. 1, 1 also, because the square root of 1 is 1. And then after that, I pick the next bigger x value that's easy to take the square root of. 2 you can't take the square root of easily, 3 you can't, but 4 you can. So the, the other one I like to see on your graph is always 4, 2. This looks like half of a parabola going sideways. Notice that all the points are in what we call quadrant 1. There are four quadrants. Do you remember learning that way back when? 1, 2, 3, 4. Quadrant 1 has positive x and y coordinates. You see our domain and range only include positive values and 0. Okay, make sure your graphs look like my graphs and make sure that they have the coordinates of the key points labeled because you're responsible for knowing them. All right, cubed root of x. Cubed root of x, the three key points are 0, 0, 1, 1, and negative 1, 1, exactly the same as x cubed. So it's easy for students to get these two confused. The difference in shape comes from the fact that when you take the cubed root of a number, like say 8, you get a smaller number like 2, right? So you'll see that the graph is not growing very fast, it's growing slowly. That's why it goes off to the side instead of going straight up like x cubed did. I often see students confuse x cubed with cube root of x on tests, so pay attention. If it helps, plot an extra point besides the three key points, because the three key points are the same. But if you plot one more point, like say 8, 2, you'll see that this is the one that goes way out sideways. You can take the cube root of any number, even negatives. You can't take the square root of a negative, but you can take the cube root of a negative. So this one has a domain and range of all real numbers. Remember, drawing it on paper is a skill different from identifying it on the screen. And I will expect to have at least a couple of graphs on the next test, so you want to practice. Okay, here's an interesting one. This is the absolute value function. Absolute value takes any number you plug into it and makes it positive. So, on the right-hand side, when we plug in, say, 0, 1, 2, you just get the identity function. This is actually, on the right-hand side, this would be the same as the line y equals x right here. But on the left-hand side, we get a different function. Because when you plug in negative 1, you get 1. When you plug in negative 2, you get 2. You get the opposite of the original value. So what line would this be right here in yellow? What's that? What line is that a part of? The minus. The minus version. That's right. y equals negative x. This is one way of writing this function, but there's another way. Absolute value function is actually the first piecewise defined function that we work with. Piecewise defined function means that you can write it as separate formulas. So for example, p of x, or remember that just means y, is equal to x in some circumstances and it's equal to negative x in other circumstances. So what you do is you make a little bracket and you say, okay, P of x is equal to x when what? Y is equal to x happened in green over here, right? What x values do we have in green over here? Do we have any negative x values in the green part? No. We have 0 up to positive infinity, right? So whenever x is bigger than or equal to 0, we're just going to let y equal x. It'll be the identity function. But when we have the yellow part over here, where all the numbers are less than 0, it's actually the same as y equals negative x. OK, we're allowed to take the uh, absolute value of any number we want. So once again, you see the domain is all real numbers. Um, but what kind of numbers does this function spit out? Only positive and 0. So you see the range is 0 to infinity. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.